In the annals of advertising history, few campaigns have left as indelible a mark as the Federal Express Fast Talker commercial, officially known as the Fast Paced World commercial. This iconic ad, featuring the rapid-fire delivery of actor John Mashita, not only revolutionized the advertising industry, but also played a pivotal role in changing the fortunes of Federal Express. Today, we dive into the history of this groundbreaking advertisement, next on the History of Television Commercials. This episode of the History of Television Commercials is sponsored by Content Revolution Labs. If you're seeking a dynamic marketing and communication strategy, along with exceptional content development that cuts through the noise and resonates with your audience, look no further. Content Revolution Labs is the perfect blend of a contractor's flexibility with a large agency's resources. Their team of dedicated marketers, strategists, and communicators empowers small businesses and mid-sized businesses, entrepreneurs, and startups with robust marketing and content solutions that drive growth and increase revenue. Their straightforward, flat pricing structure removes the guesswork and confusion and aligns perfectly with any budget. Click on the link in the description and see how their precision-tailored scalability can help fuel your company's success. Now, on to our video. Federal Express, now globally recognized as FedEx, was the brainchild of Frederick W. Smith, conceptualized while an undergrad at Yale University. In a term paper for an economics class, Smith outlined a revolutionary system for overnight air delivery of goods. His proposal was based on the inefficiencies he observed in the current freight distribution systems, particularly the challenges in coordinating time-sensitive air shipments with ground transportation. Despite the innovative nature of his idea, Smith's professor was not impressed. The paper received only a C grade, with the professor considering the concept impractical and unworkable in the real world. This academic skepticism, however, did not deter Smith. He went on to establish Federal Express in 1971 and officially launched operations in 1973 with $91 million investment from venture capitalists and $4 million of inheritance from his father, who owned a regional bus service that was eventually bought by the Greyhound Corporation. I guess transportation was always in Smith's blood. With almost $100 million available to launch the company, Federal Express was not without challenges. Financially, the company struggled with the high cost of operating a nationwide overnight delivery service, which was a novel concept at the time. The initial investment required for aircraft, delivery vehicles, and technology to track packages was substantial, as the company lost $29 million in its first 26 months of operation. Establishing a reliable and efficient overnight delivery system was a monumental task involving setting up a centralized hub-and-spoke distribution system initially based in Memphis, Tennessee, which required precise coordination of air and ground transportation. The company had to develop innovative systems for packing, tracking, sorting and routing, as well as manage the complexities of air fleet maintenance and regulatory compliance. Additionally, convincing customers to trust a new company with urgent deliveries was a major hurdle. If that wasn't difficult enough, these challenges were exacerbated by the oil crisis of the 1970s, which led to soaring fuel costs, further straining Federal Express's financial and operational resources. Things were so bad at one point, the company had only $5,000 on hand and was on the brink of bankruptcy. In a bold and desperate move, Smith took those funds to Las Vegas and gambled them over a weekend in an attempt to win money and save his company. It seems luck was on his side and he was able to win $27,000. This unexpected windfall allowed Smith to cover fuel expenses and operate for a few more days. Remarkably, this gamble also bought Smith enough time to secure additional funding for the company. With the company steadily growing, it began to advertise and eventually created commercials for television. The company began working with advertising agency Alley & Gargano in 1973, with Federal Express choosing them over a much larger J. Walter Thompson agency. Alley & Gargano originally launched as Carl Alley Inc. in 1962, 
built a reputation for developing effective ads for a roster of high-profile clients, including Hertz, IBM, and CBS, and would go on to make memorable commercials such as Dunkin' Donuts, Time to Make the Donuts, and MCI commercial featuring a couple that was used in an AT&T ad. Ali and Gargano did come up with the catchy slogan for Federal Express, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, to go along with some pretty effective print ads and commercials for The Courier. The most popular at the time was a series of commercials illustrating how everyone from managers to the chairman of the board could use Federal Express to ship items overnight. These campaigns, though effective, were traditional in their approach, emphasizing the company's operational strengths, but they were not nearly as effective as what was to come. The fast-paced world commercial was more than just an advertisement. It was a cultural phenomenon that redefined the landscape of advertising and significantly boosted Federal Express's profile. But the primary driving force behind the fast-paced world campaign was deregulation. In 1980, the U.S. significantly altered its regulatory stance on the shipping industry, embracing deregulation as part of a wider initiative to reduce government intervention across various sectors. Deregulation relaxed constraints on shipping routes and pricing and was driven by the belief that reduced regulation would spur competition, innovation, and operational efficiency. Deregulation opened new avenues for Federal Express. The fast-paced world commercial was conceptualized as a strategic move to capitalize on those opportunities aiming to position the courier as the premier choice for overnight deliveries. The commercial was a significant departure from Federal Express's earlier advertising tactics, introducing a novel and memorable approach to brand promotion. In the immediate aftermath of deregulation, John Mashita first came to the nation's attention by making an appearance on ABC's That's Incredible, where he performed You Got Trouble from the musical The Music Man. This exposure led to multiple TV opportunities for Mashita, including appearances on The Tonight Show and The Merv Griffin Show. His performance caught the attention of Patrick Kelly and Michael Tesh, two creatives at Ali and Gargano, who wasted no time conceiving a commercial where Mashita did all the talking. The fast-paced world commercial was directed by Joe Sittelmeyer, who would also direct the Where's the Beef commercial for Wendy's. In the commercial, Mashita portrayed Jim Spleen, a rapid-speaking executive. Interestingly, Mashita had to slow down his speech for the commercial, since it would be difficult for the audience to understand what he was saying if he spoke at top speed. Okay, you and his travel plans. I need to be in New York on Monday, LA on Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA on Thursday, New York on Friday. Got it? You got it. Got it. So you want to work here? What really makes you think you deserve a job here? Well, sir, I think on my feet I'm good at figures and I have a sharp mind. Excellent. Can you start on Monday? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Without hesitation. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim, Bill, Bob, Call, Fred, Low, Dork, Eight of and Ted. Business is business. And as we all know, in order to get something done, you got to do something. In order to do something, we got to get to work. So let's get to work. Thank you for taking me. Pete, you did a bang up job. I'm putting you in charge of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. I know it's perfect, Peter. That's why I picked Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's perfect. Peter, may I call you Pete? Call me Pete. Pete. There's a Mr. Schnittler here to see you. Home to wait 15 seconds. Can you wait 15 seconds? I'll wait 15 seconds. Congratulations on your deal in Denver, Dave. I'm putting you down to deal with Dallas. Don, is it a deal? Do we have a deal? It's a deal. I got to go. I got a call coming in. Hi, Doc. Just tell with Don. In this fast moving, high pressure, get it done yesterday world. Aren't you glad there's one company that can keep up with it all? You got a deal, good. I'm putting you down to deal with Dick. Dick, what's the deal with the deal? Are we dealing? We're dealing. Dave, it's a deal with Don, Dork, and Dick. Dork, it's a deal with Dave, Dick, and Dave. Don, it's a Dork with Dick, Dave, and Doug. Gotta go, Dave. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dick. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dan. Disconnecting. Federal Express. When it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. The fast-paced world ad was a game changer for Federal Express. It significantly enhanced the company's brand recognition and was instrumental in reinforcing its image as a fast and reliable delivery service. The commercial won six Clio Awards, with Mashita receiving the Best Performance Male Award and earning the moniker Motor Mouth. The commercial was acclaimed as one of the most effective campaigns in advertising history, and Mashita as the most effective spokesperson in turn-of-the-century polls. New York Magazine's 40th anniversary issue in October of 2008 ranked it as the most memorable advertisement Madison Avenue ever sold, and Advertising Age placed it number 11 in its top 100 campaigns in March of 1999. Mashita shared that he completed 29 perfect takes for the commercial's final scene, leading Joe Settlemeyer to comment on his precision. However, Mashita intentionally flubbed a line in what became the final take used in the ad. 
Machida would go on to star in other commercials for Federal Express, as well as additional commercials for other companies, including ads for Micro Machines and JetBlue. Following the success of the commercial, Federal Express continued to grow and evolve, expanding its services and global reach. The company's ability to adapt to changing market conditions and customer needs has been a key factor in its sustained success, growing to a multinational corporation with annual revenues over $90 billion. In January 2000, the company officially changed its name to FedEx, since many customers had been using the moniker for years. The company continued to expand in other areas and began acquiring other companies, such as Kinko's in 2004 and TNT Express in 2015 to expand their European operations. In 2022, Frederick Smith retired as CEO of FedEx with Raj Subramaniam moving up from president and COO to CEO. FedEx's role in popular culture was also solidified as it was prominently featured in the movie Castaway featuring Tom Hanks as an employee of the company who gets stranded on a remote island with several FedEx boxes that waltz to shore. The Federal Express fast-paced world commercial stands as a testament to the power of innovative advertising in shaping a brand's identity and connecting with customers. The commercial not only transformed the company's public image and left a lasting imprint on the advertising world, it also changed the fortunes of its fast-talking spokesperson, John Mashita. As we conclude this journey through another memorable chapter in television advertising history, we hope you've gained a deeper appreciation for what goes into making such an iconic commercial. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Remember to press the like and subscribe buttons so we can bring you more insightful episodes on the history of television commercials. Until next time.